So after nearly 20 years of serving among the most vulnerable of the world's poor, working in the area of social justice for people in poverty and women and girls coming out of the commercial sex industry and children of war, war brides and child soldiers. And after working all those years to, to try and do our part and to do good in the world, what we found is that Chris and me and our community, many of us really struggled to maintain joy in the service. And so we really struggled with having the energy to, to keep at the work. Many of us found that we were taking better care of others than we were taking care of ourselves and our families. And so our families suffered, we suffered. And many of us found that burnout was right around the corner. Others of us did burn out. And some people grew disillusioned with their faith because of the intensity of, of the problems of the world on a grand global scale, poverty and injustice. And so what we found was that to sustain and not just sustain that kind of divine work in the world, but to thrive in it, we are going to need a deep spirituality. And we learned from the, some of the greatest teachers like Mother Teresa and Henry Nouwen and Jean Vanier and Thomas Keating and Richard Rohr about this rich tradition of contemplative spirituality. And we found that we needed these contemplative prayers and contemplative practice to help us to begin to resolve the inner conflicts within us that were surfacing because of our work. And so for people who find that they're struggling to connect with God and there's an incongruence between their inner life and their active life, whether it's social justice work or a physician in the, in the local city or an attorney, whatever the Whatever your line of work, we're all interested in making the world a better place. But if we're struggling in that journey, then I think what we're doing at Gravity is for you. I think learning to develop some contemplative practices in our life that can cultivate this inner solitude, silence, and stillness, and, and allow for an inner transformation to happen then our outer work in the world is going to be all the more beautiful. The world is in desperate need of healing. And to the degree that we are healed, the world will be healed. And so we need both, the contemplative and the active. They have to go hand in hand. Some people thought we were really crazy and other people doubted our faith because of what we were doing. And. Uh, and now the people are coming and they're responding and they're saying, yes, this is what I've needed. Where has this been? Like, I'm hungry and thirsty and dying for solitude, silence, and stillness. And uh, people are waking up and people are seeing that there's more to life than what we've known. And we are invited into this incredible divine reality that engages our flesh and the stuff that we're a part of on this earth, like it, we're, it's incredible. There's so much life to be a part of and there's so much goodness to access and to give away. And cultivating a deep, rich spirituality and contemplative spirituality, I really think is, is the way of the future, I think. I think there's a lot of hope in that.